We're now joined by our panelists for a discussion on the gas uh, process. And with us we have Mr. Claude Lutaga, Mr. Pierre Lopsche, Mr. Neil De Lange, Mr. Simon Sehwabe, Mr. Johan Lotren, and Mr. Freddy Tong. Gentlemen, I've got a couple of questions in trying to unpack this gas a little bit. And Mr. Sehwabe, if you don't mind, I'd love to start with yourself. Um, and our first question is, uh, what effect will the gas have on risk-based oversight and surveillance? Shubhas, thank you. I think what we need to look at first is general aviation is also subjected to oversight like any other operational activity in aviation. The CAA and globally, they are migrating from what we used to call uh, compliance-based oversight. We have a lot of lessons that we've drawn from the previous program that we ran under the CAA, one of them being the cross-functional exchange Russian plan. So as we're drafting our model for safety risk-based oversight, we deemed that it was also important to consider the work that has been done under general aviation safety strategies. So our intention is to take the lesson learned from the previous cross-functional exit plan together with the general aviation strategy to enhance our oversight in the general aviation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sakwabe. And Mr. Delang, I'd love to come to you right now. There's a number of other industry safety campaigns. I'm quite sure CAA has a couple as well. Please tell us, how would the gas affect or integrate with, if at all applicable, with some of these other safety campaigns? Thank you, Subhash. Um, yes, of course, there is, uh, in the industry, the uh, Safety First Aviator campaign. Uh, there's of late the Rusty Pilot uh, initiative that was driven. Uh, and there's a number of other initiatives. And we foresee that going forward, uh, we support these initiatives. It's a wonderful opportunity to interact with the members on the ground, with the various flying communities uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis and we foresee that we will uh, continue that support and uh, for that purpose a, a focus group uh, will be established uh, to, to assist and to further uh, enhance our relationship with these uh, initiatives. Thank you. That certainly sounds positive. Enhance the relationship you mentioned, Mr. Delanga. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tong, you have been quite uh, prominently involved in a number of SSP and SMS activities nationally. And there is now this general aviation safety strategy. Can you tell us, does this actually fit into any of the national aviation safety plans or the global aviation safety plan? Thank you very much, Simas. That, that's a very com comprehensive question and the understanding is very important. The imperativeness of the global uh, safety strategy is very important because it aligns or needs to align to the National Aviation Safety Plan. And in that regard, on the basis of the National, National Aviation Safety Plan, that's where the strategies are developed in the essence of managing the aviation safety within the state comprehensively, without any sector of the aviation industry left out or left behind. In that sense, we will have we will have a comprehensive picture on the sense or in the sense that how does our aviation looks like in a basis of performance rather than just compliance sake. Now, when it comes to this, it really aligns directly or fits directly to the National Aviation Safety Plan in that way, and so it does on the I will say horizontal feed to the state safety program, which is the set of objectives and regulations and activities that are aimed at managing and improving aviation safety. Thank you, Mr. Tong. And Mr. Lopesha, I've, I've got a question for yourself. So some would argue that aviation training is really the crux of ensuring aviation safety. And the question is, with all of these many safety initiatives as alluded by Mr. DeLange and the rest, why not just focus on training? Do you have an answer on that? Thank you, Subhash. Yes, um, it's a very important point. First of all, I would agree that uh, training is the, the crux of safety. But I just want to make it clear that the General Aviation Safety Strategy is exactly what it says. It's not just another safety initiative or another safety seminar. It's a strategic plan. It's a long-term strategic plan whereby we are looking at a holistic uh, approach to all the different facets of safety. So training will form a very critical part um, in the strategy and moving forward. 
you know, we will be looking at uh, continuous professional development programs. We will be looking at things like train the trainer programs. So training in itself has numerous angles. But we cannot look at purely training. We need to look at the bigger picture. And you know, as I've already said, we need to look at it holistically. So, and, and that's, that's the essence of it. Being a strategy, um, we, we need to go beyond just one or two areas that, 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 that play a vital role. And I think in that way, that is exactly what GAS is aiming to achieve. GAS is aiming to achieve um, you know, a, a, a more sustainable, longer duration impact on general aviation safety in totality. Thank you, Mr. Lopesha. Mr. Lutaga, I'd love to ask you a question at this point. So, we've noticed that with RPAS being a reasonably quite a, a new development in the aviation sector in South Africa, and with COVID, AVMED has become a lot more prominent as well. And there's a number of additional research projects that's happening at the, at the moment. Are these at all going to feature in the gas in any way? Yes, Subhash. Um, I'm sure you'll agree that RPS is one of the fastest growing sectors in aviation at the moment. And with this rapid growth in um, aviation comes the added risk of increased accidents and incidents. So the GAS document aims to um, launch a focus group that will look at the threat of RPS in aviation, specifically in general aviation. And on this focus group will have the relevant industry RPS experts. Further to that, with regards to AVMED, the GAS actually plays more of a supporting role for flight crew members and aviation professionals in general. We'll partner with medical professionals on a focus group in order to look and address all the medical and human factors elements of the uh, gas project. With the regards to the research projects, that's actually something that I'm very passionate about because there's a dire need for research into exactly why accidents and incidents are occurring. Once again, we'll set up a focus group with the relevant experts to dive into questions such as what are the causal factors, how to manage to establish uh, trend monitoring, and how to mitigate those um, causal factors. Thank you, Mr. Lutaga. And Mr. Lotteran, um, you're quite passionate about safety. You're the author of two books uh, in relation to aviation safety as well. And I'd love to ask you a question on uh, the GARS, or what is also known as the General Aviation Accident reduction seminars. Please tell us what is the purpose and desired outcome of these seminars? The purpose, the straight answer is obviously to reduce accidents. So the General Aviation Accident Reduction Seminar will be the spearhead of the General Aviation Safety Strategy. So we have looked at accidents as they repeatedly occur as phenomena. And we said, collectively, are using exponents from the industry. So let's go and look at the deeper underlying causes. Why are pilots overwhelmed? Why do they get ensnared? And then we discovered that accidents form a very definite pattern. They are taxonomically classifiable and identifiable. But they are nowhere to be found in standard curriculums. That is the surprise. So what we endeavor to achieve here is to get a so-called streetwise pilot, a more resilient pilot that is more aware and that is more able to recognize the precipitating circumstances and the underlying factors and the contributing factors as to not be ensnared by these. And in identifying the most vital, vital aspects, uh, we have applied our minds collectively. So this is a team effort. It's also a coordinated effort with the industry. And we said if we have a couple of hours to spend with an attendee at a seminar, what will we talk about? So now we're talking about real scenarios that really occur most fatal, fatal accidents and we said let's look at them in terms of criteria criteria like how um, exposed are pilots how what are the consequences of uh, these accidents how regularly do they happen how severe are they and we said let's look 
at a method of optimizing our time. And let's really talk to the, not only the mind of the student, let's talk, or the, or the attendee, let's talk to his heart. Let's get him to accept these values and internalize it, make it part of his mental makeup and, and his personal resolve not to get into an accident and to look out for the accidents at a perception which counts, which matters. And in so doing, we would like to develop um, captaincy, which is a concept that's gotten lost, and airmanship. So let's put out a better product there for the sake of those who come after us and the sake of the young ones and their passengers. So uh, we designed also a system whereby they would relate to the protagonists of safety, their peers, though they're more seasoned veteran uh, presenters and they can identify with them and we can get by. So that is the purpose, is really to be sensible about avoiding accidents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lottering. It sounds like you certainly have your hands full with uh, a number of these initiatives. And Mr. Sakwabe, um, I've got another question for you, and that is in relation to ICAO. Um, so ICAO has defined numerous uh, high-risk categories uh, in relation to aircraft accidents. And uh, perhaps you can tell us how would these be addressed as part of the gas? So what I think, I've once seen a quote which says, history has taught us that we fail to learn from history. As South African, we, we refuse to be part of that approach. The history that we've learned, and from the states, from Akaya and globally, that demonstrate what kind of accident are occurring. We've also realized the very same accident are also occurring in general aviation sector. The high risk occurrence that have been deemed by Akaya that requires to be attention will be mid-air collision, loss of flight, loss of control in flight, uh, runway incursion and excursion. Out of that, when we put the gas strategy, we said, since we realize these are part of our environment, we need to put concentrated effort to ensure that we address those issues, especially since they are known to us, in order to make sure our aviation as safe as it can ever be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sekwabe. And Mr. Delanda, just following on from that, so ICAO does release a number of publications and they have numerous events. And, and I would like to ask you, for this gas, will there be any dedicated publications for industry? Uh, will there also be something I've heard called a National Aviation Safety Week? And perhaps you can tell us a bit more about that. Thanks, Subash. Um, yes, I think we've heard a lot being said about the intention of what it is that we're trying to achieve collectively. The, the next question would be, how do we get this message out? How do we liaise with the recipients of the message and our partners in industry? And to this end, we have to come up with a complete communication solution, if I can call it that, to include social media. Lots of people are now communicating on their cell phones and on the internet and on modern social media platforms. So obviously we need to have a presence there and we need to use that to get the message across. Uh, we also have to look at the print media um, and how we're we going to address getting the message out using more conventional means. How do we drive awareness of what it is that we do on a constant basis? As it was also pointed out, this is a long-term project. And also one of the initiatives uh, that was raised in our consultation sessions uh, dealt with perhaps the hosting of, of a, a, a National Aviation Week or an event where we can have a multiple conferencing uh, situation where we can interface with and get feedback from the industry uh, on how to take this uh, project forward and how to see if we've addressed all of the items that we are setting out to address. So the communication solution is really an, an, an all-out holistic approach to, to make sure that we continue our communication with the industry. Thank you. Holistic approach. That sounds very positive. Thank you, Mr. Delanga. And Mr. Tong. Given your background on SMS, and I take it that you, you probably are of the view that recreational aviation is not as much uh, impacted by SMS efforts as perhaps some of the more regulated forms of industry, such as airliners, 
corporate aviation operators. And the question to you would be, are there any safety gains that would be applicable uh, on recreational aviation activity in terms of gas? Thank you very much for the question. The gains are a lot. We can't even start, start counting that, nor even end into, end to count them. In this sense, what is the objective of the SMS? To who does the SMS fit to? The SMS is a safety management system that is ideally adopted, implemented by the service provider with a primary objective of what? Two components in the middle of them. Safety risk management, which is identifying the hazard, doing the risk analysis thereof, and coming up with the mitigations. So along that process, the process is a continual process whereby it needs to look at itself in terms of the continuous improvement. That's when it brings the safety assurance. Now, when it brings the safety assurance, it's whatever the mitigations that I have input as an operator, as a service provider, are they ideally serving the purpose? That's where it comes. Now, the, where does that feed? That feed to the what you call the state safety program. The state safety program is ideally there to work and guide the service provider and then to get the data from the service provider and use that data explicitly, analyze it to identify where are the key risk factors on the basis of operational environment, in, on the basis of operational sector. So that's where it will, go to, it will fit into the state safety program. So ideally, when you have that the picture of the safe, state safety program, because it is a program, now we are ideally, vertically so, be able to fit to the NAS, which is a national aviation safety, pro, uh, safety plan. Now the plan will come into commensurate to the time period that is given on what is not to be doing, what interventions are there. Taking from what uh, my colleague has said about the safety enhancement, that's which I will be derived from the NASP. It is very important that now the gas is coming along to fit into the NASP. So those safety enhancement initiatives, they will ideally be there and be a part of the plan and the program and then be installed where from? through the service provider's perspective point of view. Then ideally so, we are able to manage safety comprehensively across the, the aviation entity. And then we ideally know to, to identify and tell with confidence that how is the outlook of our aviation safety performance through it, through the safety management system. Thank you very much. Mr. Lopesha, so we've heard a lot about safety initiatives, but we also know that development of any aviation industry is in the best interest of the state, and in this instance of South Africa. And the question to you is, can safety be improved while still developing the aviation industry? Thank you so much. First of all, yes, we need to understand that these two things go hand in hand. It's very easy in a sense to achieve safety but we might end up with a situation where we become so safe that we don't have aviation anymore so it's critical that while we developing safety while we instilling a culture of safety that we continue to nurture and support the growth of aviation um, I think the critical thing as well is that we need to understand Whatever we're developing today is going to affect our industry and our safety in the future. So it's critical that this whole program also looks at uh, future development. And I'm talking about the youth that are going to become our aviators of the future. Um, and if we instill that, that mindset, that culture of safety today, it will definitely improve the results downstream. But at the same time, we need to support the industry in such a way that we're not just instilling the culture, that there is growth, there is continuity, there is sustainability. Because after all, one of our core functions uh, as, a, as a state, as a CA, is to make sure that our industry continues to develop, continues to grow. And I think if we can achieve that growth, if we can achieve that sustainability with one foot uh, in the growth and development portion and the other foot in this culture of safety, I think we'll have a far brighter, far more secure future uh, in, of our aviation industry. 
Let, latching on to that, Mr. Lutaga, just to some degree, um, it was mentioned earlier, there's this term, devolution of power. Uh, and, and what does this involve? And is this somehow related to Part 149, the Aviation Recreational Organization? Thank you, Subash. So for me, devolution of power has got two key elements. The first one is regulatory empowerment, and the second one is community responsibility. Let me start with regulatory empowerment. We cannot have a conversation about regulatory empowerment if we do not bring into the conversation regulatory development. So I mentioned before that we want to have a number of focus groups. One of these focus groups is going to look at devolution of power, and if need be, there will be regulatory development um, activities within this focus group. So the same applies for Part 149. The focus group will look at the 149 regulations, assess them, and if required, develop on those. So my second point is community responsibility. As aviation professionals, if you want to take part in any flying activity, we need to exercise a certain level of responsibility. With responsibility comes accountability to something or someone, and it's there and you will find the key to successful devolution of power. The objective overall is basically to enlarge the footprint of the CAA through devolution of power. Thank you, Mr. Lutaga. And Mr. Lotteran, I've got a final question for yourself, and that is um, educational guidance material. It was mentioned uh, much earlier on. Uh, is this beneficial to reducing accidents in your view, uh, a man of many years of experience in this area? And then the second part of this question is how will the success of this strategy be measured? Well, if we look at training, the components are skills, knowledge, attitude and discipline. So uh, we, we are now looking at those factors that aren't readily identifiable. So the educational guidance material uh, bring everybody on the same page and it ensures that we have a maximized approach so that uh, we deal with the correct uh, incidents and accidents in terms of severity, in terms of prob probability, and in terms of exposure. Uh, to eliminate those, those factors in, in a coordinated fashion so that everybody do, don't, doesn't just go off on his own tangent. Now, the only aspect of it that's measurable will probably be attitudes. So, uh, when you measure something, it's either got to be done in a quantitative or a qualitative way. Quantity of accidents, we cannot influence those underlying drivers and, and factors. We have got no control over it. But we can influence attitudes. And to measure that, we will have to draw up surveys, uh, starting at, with key questionnaires at the initial seminars, and then measure um, trends. We can ask our industry partners to participate in that. Say the dedicated media and our own uh, media to print questionnaires and, and to measure how the attitudes towards safety change over the five year span of this entire program. And hopefully we will then see the impact through reduced, the re reduced number of accidents. That, that is the, the best we can hope for. So we aim for the best and we hope for the best and uh, to measure it, that's going to be a bit of a challenge, but it's doable. I hope that answers your question. It surely does. Thank you, Mr. Lotteran. And that brings us to the end of the panel discussion. I'd just like to go perhaps uh, around for the last time, uh, starting with yourself, Mr. Tong. And you can give us any uh, part, parting words from yourself on why is this beneficial to industry? It's just in brief, please, and we can follow on with the rest of the panel. Thank you again, once again, Swiss, for the third time. It is beneficial for the industry because in the sense that we need to understand uh, what is happening there in the industry. Remember, 
the CA would like to uh, 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 the industry to self-regulate. But being self-regulating yourself is not like in the sense of I do as I please at any time. It's on the basis that I comply and by virtue of complying to the regulation, I can even measure the level of my compliance to that regulation and I can even ascertain uh, to what extent do I comply to that specific regulation or either you over comply to that specific regulation. Uh, it is very important that uh, such initiative is taken and uh, it will take the, the industry to a point where it's balanced whereby we are able to contribute to the global world because aviation is the one that connects the world. Without aviation, ideally, we're not going to connect this with a better, fast speed of frequency that we would like to. Thank you very much. Mr. Lutheran. Well, sir, if one life can be saved throughout, through this coordinated program, it will already be worth it. God put young heads on old shoulders, but we can surely mentor them. So I hope we're going to leave a legacy of safety. And that is my, my prayer for this entire program, and that it will outlive us, and it will become a culture. Mr. Sekhobe. Just thank you. I'm, I'm going to latch on what uh, Johan just said. You say, to us, every life matters. And safety is a journey. There's no destiny to say, I've reached ultimately what I wanted. And I also want to appeal to the members of the industry to say, as much as we are the regulator, you are a safety partner to us. We cannot achieve what we're seeking to achieve without your involvement. You may be deemed to be an approval holder because you are carrying an approval, but ultimately, this is a joint responsibility. We are the regulator, you are the regulated one, yet you are our safety partner. We therefore seek your participation in the program. Thank you. Participation, excellent. Then, Mr. Delanga, how about yourself? Uh, thanks, Subhash. Um, I think what excites me most about this program is the holistic nature of it. Uh, the fact that we are now, in a concerted way, addressing a variety of safety-related matters uh, that we can address as one. And I think that has been lacking for some time. There's been a lot of expertise put into and a lot of focus put into very specific objectives. Uh, now we have a concerted effort. And I, and I think that, that to me is the exciting part uh, of the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delanga. And Mr. Lopsha, how about yourself? Yes, thanks, Subhash. Um, not to repeat what's already been said, but I also think that I'm very excited because this is not just, as I've already said, a safety seminar or just another safety program. It's, it's a, it's a well-developed, well-considered, well-researched strategy. Um, what I like about it is that, as already been alluded to, this is a partnership between the Civil Aviation Authority and industry. This is an holistic approach, not only to safety, but to the overall of safety, but at the same time looking at development. And you know, aviation plays an absolutely critical role in our country's economy, uh, in, in various industries. Um, and I think if we can nurture and support those industries and general aviation to grow those industries, to grow the economy, to grow empowerment and skills development, but with this whole program, as I've already said, with this culture of safety. I believe that we are really going to do a lot of good and a lot of uh, sort of you know, uh, prosperous results, positive results, will come out of this whole program in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lopsha. And how about yourself, Mr. Rutaga? Thank you so much. So I agree with what all my panel members have actually said, but one element that I enjoy about the GASP is that it's a long-term strategy that will ensure continuous education, training, and safety awareness when it comes to safety in the country. And I think that long-term commitment will ensure that we have a solid investment and value add for the general aviation industry as a whole. Thank you, Mr. Lutaga. Thank you to our panelists.
And there you have it, uh, some of our panel members double-clicking on the gas project, uh, giving us their thoughts, uh, and I'm sure it has been quite beneficial to us. We will now take a very brief coffee break, and when we return, we'll uh, be back with Q&As. We'll see you in a bit.